Hey guys, it's Jason with your Hopium Free Crypto Channel. Today we're looking at long-term support levels for Bitcoin and Go signals in the short term for Bitcoin. So if you enjoy the content, hit that like button, subscribe to the channel, bell notification icon. Let's dive in. Starting with our crypto coin market caps, 1.5 trillion on the overall market cap. We'll look at that and review the total market caps on the chart in just a sec, looking at our support levels. Bitcoin 661 billion, 35,200 today. Ethereum 2,300, starting to drop again. Cardano $1.44 after seeing lows into the $1.30s. Binance 338. And apart from that, everything else has just been pretty flat over the last 24 hour period. It's about zero to one and a one and a half percent, with the exception here of Polygon after dropping pretty heavily over the last couple of weeks. And seven days, uh, most things are down pretty heavily. We, we know that by now, you know, around uh, 10 to sort of 20% on many of these cryptos. So the overall market caps, I want to bring this one to your attention and just look at it in terms of a long-term perspective. I think there's getting becoming a little bit of confusion between short-term trading, long-term swing trading, and of course, long-term investing, which is essentially just buying and hodling and not even being concerned with... Uh, buying lows, selling tops, or buying lows and just writing it out. So this one is just looking at long-term swing trading. And this basically means uh, we're looking to purchase low and sell somewhere near the top. Remember, the plan isn't to buy the exact low and sell the exact top. We just want to be taking a chunk out of the middle. And we just want to take as much as we can, but not get too greedy because then this can happen. And we don't need to try to get in because we could be buying in every single dip all the way down. So this chart here is the crypto total market cap. This is a monthly chart. And I've just got it on some candles to give you guys a little bit of color. Some people are wanting to see some color. Let's have a look at some color. Basically, the recent period has been a couple of months down. Well, this one is basically an outside bar. So in my way of trading, this wouldn't be red. This would be a black bar. But of course, we're just going to use what's here. We have a lower close and a currently a lower close this month of June. So May and June are down and we saw one, two, three, four, five, six, seven months straight up. And across Bitcoin, the only time we've seen that is through the previous bull market of 2017. So it's to be expected that we're going to have some downtime. We need to have a cool off period. Now, the last bull market was from the spike low. You could measure it from another low, which formed in about uh, August of 2015. Up until the top, it was about 36 bars. Now, if we measure it from our COVID low, we're currently only up 14 bars. And 14 is almost one of these sections. And we saw two of these sections through the 2017 bull market. Now, if we measured it from December 18, which is the major low, we're still up 29 bars. So it's still just short of the previous bull market. And so I do think that this next bull market is going to be longer. I don't think we're going to repeat an exact four-year cycle. I think that's kind of nonsense to think we're going to do something exactly the same as the past. What the past is there to do is to help us understand what may come moving forward, knowing that it's not going to be exactly the same. And so that's why I'm measuring these in monthly timeframes, because this is a matter of patience. And we've got, we can see five months up, one month down, eight months up, I'm expecting three to six months down, potentially longer, but I'll be able to see that as the market progresses. But like I talked about a couple of months ago, if we got a fall, which was kind of on the cards at some point, it was inevitable, we just weren't sure when. After seven months up, I'm expecting about a three to six-ish months sideways. And I'm saying six months because I'm measuring it from the COVID low, which gives us a top of around 14 bars. So I'm just looking at halfway points. Now let's take the color off. We're going back to bars, getting this off log and looking at another 50% point, which is our $1.34 trillion total market cap in crypto. So uh, that's my support level looking at it in terms of a bullish space. And then if it flips under the 50%, this level here, then that's more of a bearish look at the market. Although it doesn't mean we're going to break down and be done for three years. I think it's kind of similar to how someone would look at a moving average. And we're looking at a moving average on a weekly chart. 
the market is currently under the 20 week moving average. So it's technically bearish in that sense where it flips under the 20 week, but it doesn't mean we're going to be bearish for another three years. It's just bearish in the short term. At least that's the way I'm viewing the market. And so I'm not using moving averages. I'm just using 50% zones, which are FIB numbers. Well, not exactly FIB numbers, but they're GAN theory using a FIB extension tool. And so that's how I've come up with uh, measuring my ranges, looking out three to six months, knowing that this could be another good period to be buying in. And I'll update the fear and greed buy plan in just a moment. Now over to long-term swings on Bitcoin. So this is not worrying about the day-to-day -day ups and downs, volcano news, politician news down, uh, El Salvador up. Like it, that's the stuff that we're not concerning ourselves with here. We're just looking at what can happen longer term. We want to buy in these areas and then sell here a little, this is my plan, and higher. That's the whole idea. As I said earlier, I just want to take a chunk out of the market. I'm not trying to buy this and sell this. I think that's a fool's game. And it's a game that I don't want to play because it just makes life a lot harder and I'm going to get profits doing this regardless. So this is the long-term look. This again is just measuring weeks to understand when the market actually moves. And I put this in a previous video, just looking at uh, the total time the market was up, 120 weeks, but within 120 weeks, and this applies to all markets. This is not just crypto or stocks or anything. Markets generally move in uh, long sections, but within those sections, you get sideways consolidation periods. And so this market moved 11 weeks up, 28 weeks sideways, four weeks up, 17 weeks sideways, 12 weeks up, 12 weeks sideways. The point is that it tends to go sideways. It's in an uncertain period for longer than it actually moves. So this is the move period. This is the uncertainty period, what's happening next. Then it moves, then it's uncertain, then it moves again, and then eventually momentum shifts and it flips the other way. The reason for that, for the importance of understanding that, is the dollar cost averaging plan. If you're not buying in these zones and you're waiting for something, this is for the long-term plan, and you're just waiting until the market begins to move, often you can be too late to get into the market. So that's why I always stress having a plan that you can follow and which helps you identify these zones and gets you in even if the market falls a little further because once it starts to move, we know they move very fast. And if you miss the, the movement, you miss a week or so there because you're worried or you're not sure whether to get in or not, then basically the move is done and you miss out on very, very big multiples. You need to get in as close as you can. Obviously, we're not getting the exact bottom, but as close as you can in these periods so that you can get the multiples as the market moves up. Now, this is the weekly chart again. These are the support levels that I'm looking at in case. I don't think it's a definite, but in case we break down our levels here around 28.5K and then our previous tops are around 20K. So somewhere between that 18, 20, 21K. Uh, this is something that will continue to follow up. In the short term, like I said earlier on, I think I'm looking at a go signal. Well, I'm looking for a go signal in the short term because we've had one, two, three, four, kind of five, four and a half, five weeks down. At some point, I do expect a rally. So far, the market hasn't shown us it will get anything strong. And by strong, I mean coming back to these levels. You can see a whole lot of closes in that zone. If I throw it onto a line chart, you can see a lot of closes up here. And I'm just expecting at least to come back and test around the 38s, which are these highs, up to around the 42s, just to begin with until the market can decide what it wants to do from that point. Now, that's going to give us an idea of what we could expect moving forward. Like I said, this is more of the intermediate time frame. I'm not looking at super long term here or super, super short term. This is just to understand what's happening in the shorter term, in the medium term not the long term. I know that probably sounds a bit confusing, but I tend to look at markets on multiple time frames, and uh, it's just to give me a broader idea of what's going on. But if you're in the long term play, this is just a bit of fun for you just to see if you can read the chart moving forward. The dominance play, we've read this pretty well in the market. We had our double top, we had our GAN 200%, it hit that. That basically means a 200% hit from a double top is a reversal point in the market. And we saw a reversal. Now I see another reversal sign here. And I'm looking for around the top to be tested. And then we go towards our 100% and somewhere around our 125 to 150%. So somewhere around the 53 to 55% dominance on Bitcoin. 
which leads into my uh, theory and my plan to just be buying Bitcoin in this stage and not altcoins. Like I talked about in yesterday's video, that's my strategy. That's my plan. I've created something that works for me. Go and do something that works for you. If you don't agree with what I'm doing, just test it, have it planned out and test it so that you can figure out whether it is a real uh, if the rules actually work for you or if you're just making stuff up. That's basically how you do it here. So this is the Bitcoin dominance for those reasons because I'm also playing altcoins to get more Ethereum and more Bitcoin. Now to our go signal on Bitcoin. I posted this on Twitter a day and a half ago and this is just a short term trade. This is just looking at the market to see what's coming next. I'm just play, uh, playing with the volume and the bar patterns to figure out are we going to get a short term move up to around our 38 to 42 ish K. So this is a trade, meaning if I don't get a signal of a breakout, then I just readjust this level of our point C further down. So this is the point C on the red. So that came up here. And now we have this little inside day, which is the 13th. So it's a bit lower. I haven't got a, a go signal just yet on this small short term trade. This is not the long term buy everything now and hope it goes to 50 or 60 grand. This is not what this is about. This one is looking at about the 42K as a 100% repeat of this range. And I suspect we will get a push up. I'm, I don't know if we'll get to that 42K. I think we'll probably come and test 38, 39, 40, somewhere around there because that's where these highs are lining up. And I think the market needs to test those to see whether there is enough buying action or we need to come back down and test the lows. Just more part of the Wyckoff method in the Wyckoff accumulation zone. The tops need to be tested to see how strong the buyers are. And if they're not strong, then the market comes back down. The whales will start to sell off their Bitcoin to dump the market to come back and test these lows again to see if we have any more sellers. And that's why we end up with higher lows and uh, higher tops to test the sellers. If, if there's more buying support coming in higher than the previous low. And so they're just going backwards and forwards doing this sort of dance. Now, we'll continue to update that throughout the week and on Twitter. So make sure you follow me over there. Our fear and greed, today we're at 23. Yesterday was 28. So there was no reason to be buying Bitcoin according to this plan, which is not complete. It's just a theory I have and I'm just testing it on a spreadsheet. Okay, and that's what you guys have been following here. These are the last days that we bought Bitcoin we're currently at break even with a 35 and a half K Bitcoin. Now, uh, my brother also has a Twitter account. You can go and follow him, Pizzino Michael. Uh, he actually trades regularly and that's what he's been doing for the last 11 years on futures. So commodities markets, metals, gold, the S&P 500, that's been his job for 11 years is to trade those markets on leverage. So as a trader, he's just looking at very short term moves. So if you're interested in that, go and follow his account. And we're just looking at short term moves on Bitcoin to test out the rules, which we've been doing for about 11 years. And this is in particular GAN theory using 50% zones. So we've hit our first target here and basically looking at the next little rebound, looking at volume. And then the other target here is around 38K. So like I said, that's Twitter over there. Uh, you can also follow my Twitter. I'm posting here a lot of the crypto stuff that I'm putting here on the channel, but this is just so much easier to keep up to date. So if I've got an idea, I can pop it up here and you guys can see that. So make sure you're following Twitter as well. And also Instagram for daily Q and A's. Sundays are the day that I post out a question and you guys can go and post your questions there. And throughout the week, I get back to you on Instagram stories. Last thing is the Investor Accelerator. If you wanna learn more about investing, trading, crypto, stocks, and property, this is the place to be. Check it out. Link is in the description down below. If you're not ready to join us in the membership, there is a free newsletter down below as well, which we update on uh, every two weeks. Free newsletter goes out to your email address. That's it for the update, guys. That is um, where I'm waiting for a signal on a short-term Bitcoin play and where I'm where I'm looking at long-term support levels on Bitcoin and also the timeframes I'm looking at just to give me a peace of mind moving forward in this bearish time in the market. So if you found some value from the content, hit that like button down below, subscribe to the channel, hit the bell notification icon so you can be updated with the regular content coming your way. 
I've got more altcoin videos, more alt, uh, news videos and interview videos coming up this week and next week. Interviews with crypto CEOs. So I hope you stick around for that. Catch me on Instagram, Twitter and on the channel. Until next time, have more fun to get more done.